you've got questions, well, we've got answers and we have the man to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Hey, it is great to be with you today, Bob. Great to be with you as well. And I understand your inbox is full. Indeed, had a question uh, this week from Christian asking us about the viability of buying back your pension. And uh, it's worth noting that there are a couple of ways this term is sometimes used. So the primary way that this term is used is while you are working, sometimes uh, you may have worked for another employer that your current employer will give you credit towards their pension. So oftentimes there's a formula and for each year you work, you accrue a certain amount of benefits. Maybe you work for two or three years for another employee and you want to have that service credited to your current employer to increase your future pension. What you can sometimes do is called buying back your pension. In short, you put in a specific amount of dollars that uh, is effectively your contribution. You're buying back those previous years of service. So let's say you end uh, work with 18 years, but you worked three years for the previous employer your current employer will treat you instead of having 18 years as having 21 years. Now, whether or not this makes sense can vary from person to person. Of course, longevity plays a huge factor in this because the longer you live, the more it makes sense to buy back previous years of service because you will continue to get payments with a pension in general for the rest of your life, perhaps for the rest of a spouse's life as well. But another reason could be the actual formula that your company uses to determine a pension. For instance, with some employers, when you hit certain years of service, there's kind of like a jump in the payment structure. So maybe you get one and a half percent of your final three years worth of salary, the average, for the first you know 20 years of service. But if you hit the 20 year mark, then all of a sudden that one and a half jumps to 2%. Right. So that additional service going from 19 years to 20 years can be a huge increase in your pension because not only is it one extra year of service, but you're going from one and a half to two percent for each of those 20 years. So it's a much bigger jump. And if you were otherwise going to be out after 18 years, buying back two would be a home run for a lot of people in those situations. Bottom line, though, is you have to check on your pensions formula and what your employer offers. That brings us to the second way sometimes people think about buying back pensions. What if you start your pension because you retired and then you go back to work either for another employer or more often than not, the question arises as I went back to the same employer. I thought I was done and they wrote me back in, right? Here I am again. And there we've got to look at the structure of your employer plan. It's really going to be dictated by your plan as to what they will allow, whether you can stop payments, whether you can start them again. Uh, it, you've got to look at the structure of that plan that's offered by your employer. Hmm. So uh, just a couple of questions. One is this typically applies to um, workers who might work, I don't know, as a school teacher, perhaps, or Department of Public Works or police or fire, that sort of thing? Absolutely. Those would be our, our primary uh, individuals who this would apply to simply because they're government workers, right? If we look at the private sector today, very few private sector uh, employers offer pension plans. They were very common up until about the 1980s, at which point employers kind of looked around and said, wait a second, if the markets don't go well, we're not only on the hook for all our current employees, ease salaries, but we're also on the hook for making good on all these former employees' retirements. So let's start utilizing this 401k more or these other structures and put that retirement risk essentially on the employees. So over the last four decades, we've seen a gradual, de not a gradual, a pretty significant decrease in the amount of private employers that offer pension plans. Now, federal, state, and local governments, that's still a big perk for a lot of them is the ability to have a pension. And because you have that pension, a lot of times public workers will uh, earn less for a comparable job that they might have in the private sector. The trade-off, of course, is you have a little bit more retirement security knowing that you've got this ongoing source of income via a pension. Mm. So one more follow-up question, which is I serve on my uh, town's retirement board and oftentimes the employee uh, has to request to buy back the pension and the board has to approve it. Has that been the case in your experience as well? 
Yeah, uh, again, different systems function a little bit differently, but it's certainly going to be something that is ultimately driven by the employee. So you always want to know what your plan offers. And then if the plan offers, you want to do it. Some, In some instances, it'll be subject to board approval. In some instances, it's just it, it, it's part of what you do, right? You just, if you send this in, this is how we work. Uh, so knowing how your plan works is, but even knowing that's an option, right? So many people go through and they may not even know what's an option. And the earlier you buy back, the younger you are, the less expensive that will be, right? Because when you're older, uh, you generally, you, you, it's going to cost you more for those years of service. So you're going to want to try to buy back as early as possible if that's something you're considering doing, in most instances, I should say. Yeah. Well, I think you answered that reader's question and all my crazy follow, follow-ups as well. Well, we love questions. We love follow-ups. And so if you've got a question that you'd like Bob and I to tackle, let us know. Give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to answering your questions here real soon.